What's up Guardians, Profane here, thanks for checking out the video. Today we are going over a complete start to finish guide on acquiring the Wish Ender Exotic Bow during Season of Plunder. While I have covered obtaining the Wish Ender in the past, today's video will be a complete uncut guide focusing on addressing some of the common issues that many Guardians have been experiencing when attempting this exotic quest. So if you've encountered your own issues in getting this amazing exotic bow, then this is definitely the video for you. Before we get started, if you end up enjoying the video and finding it helpful, then please be sure to help support the channel below by hitting that like button along with the subscribe button if you're new. Both are greatly appreciated. The Wish Ender Exotic Bow is one of the best bows in the game, but sadly, it is tied to one of the most buggy and frustrating quests in all of Destiny. And if that weren't bad enough, overcoming the necessary tasks can be an intense challenge on their own, especially for newer Guardians. With that being said, the first complication many Guardians experience is how to obtain and start the Wish Ender quest. Most Guardians will be able to pick up the Broken Talisman Exotic Quest from the Tower Kiosk. If you're unable to claim the quest from the tower kiosk, be sure that you've cleared out enough space in your quest log and in your inventory so that you can receive the broken talisman quest and that you will have room for the three tokens that could be rewarded as you complete the quest. While the tokens associated to the wish ender quest were supposed to have been removed when the tangled shore was vaulted, there are still guardians who receive these even if not holding on to the broken talisman quest. Whether you have tokens or not, it makes no difference as it will no longer play a factor in obtaining the wish ender. For those guardians who don't have the broken talisman quest in the quest kiosk, that's perfectly fine. This most likely means that you have never traversed into the Shattered Throne dungeon, and you've never beaten its first boss, which is where the quest was originally granted and where you will need to go to acquire the Wish Ender quest and to complete its objectives. So if you find yourself not being able to find the quest or not having the tokens, that's completely fine. What you'll need to do is load up the Shattered Throne dungeon and complete it up to the point of the first ogre boss. It's not a requirement to continue on through this point though. After defeating the boss, you will need to communicate with the statue of Sir Ido, who will reward you with either the Broken Talisman quest or possibly the three tokens. These tokens are titled the Dreaming Token of Erevix, Quarum, and Zavoth. If you receive the tokens but no quest, that's fine. You'll still be able to acquire the Wish Ender quest once you've fulfilled the objectives of the tokens. But you'll need to make sure that as you complete each task that your tokens are transforming from dreaming tokens to cleansed tokens. The next portion of the guide will be explicitly dedicated to those guardians who do not have the Broken Talisman quest, who do not have tokens, and who have not ran through the Shattered Throne previously. These guardians will want to follow along with the video to complete the opening stages of the dungeon so that they can begin the quest for the Wish Ender. If you have already ran through the opening stages and just need help completing the objectives for each token, then feel free to skip forward in the video. I'll add timestamps for everyone to easily jump to the different segments that they need help for. If this is your first time running through the Shattered Throne, I would highly recommend using a Solar or Void 3.0 build, as these builds offer more survivability perks like Classy Restoration, Radiance, Devour, and Tenacity. With that being said, I challenged myself to complete this using Using the new Arc 3.0 build, along with Trinity Ghoul, and I can honestly say that with the exception of the excellent performance that the Trinity Ghoul provides, the Arc 3.0 subclasses just fall short in comparison to Void and Solar, and because of that, you'll have much better success using something other than Arc 3.0. Utilizing Solar Resist mods, Sniper Resistance, and Concussive Dampener mods can really come in handy throughout this dungeon, as you'll face off against a ton of snipers and enemies that will leave the ground scorched in fire. With how impactful Incandescent has become, this would be a big asset to utilize on your weapons alongside a Solar 3.0 build. If you have the Malfeasance, you'll find that it works remarkably well here as all of the enemies you face up against will be taken. The first segment of this dungeon will require you to open the doors to the descent. To do this, you will need to clear out the enemies in each of the seven sectors in order to how their symbols appear. 
As you clear out each sector, you'll need to identify the next symbol which will appear in the center platform after you defeat the enemies. This will be your next destination. I'll put a nifty little map of each of these sectors and their symbols so that you can better navigate through this section. At this point, there's no additional steps you'll have to take, just unlocking the doorway. Osiris!
Once you've unlocked the doorway and dropped down into the descent, you'll need to make your way through four unique gauntlet areas. The first two will be filled with taken vandals, phalanxes, and knights, an area that you'll find more success out of long-ranged weapons, like scouts or bows. The third area will be filled with balancing beams, blights, and ogres. You'll need to drop the ogres as quick as possible to avoid it being blasted off any of these narrow ledges. At any point, death will cause you to restart the encounter back at the beginning of the descent. You'll need to get to and reach the end of the room and head through the slow-mo thrallway.
Your main objective here is to not kill the enemies, but to avoid them as you make your way through the end of the maze without becoming thrall food. Once you've dropped down and out of the slow-mo zone, you'll have just a few ledges to cross before reaching the first boss of Shattered Throne. This can be an extremely difficult encounter for solo guardians. With that being said, you will need to collect the auras of the four wizards that spawn in around the room. Once obtaining these auras, called Petitioner's Marks, you'll be able to slam the platforms in the room to deal damage to the boss. Timing will be of the utmost importance here, as you'll have to collect all four auras and slam them before your timer runs out, and before the next set of wizards start to spawn in. Because of this, I find it best to circle the room and clear out all the rank and file adds first so that you will have only the wizards to contend with, which will ultimately save you a ton of time and effort. You have to collect all four petitioner's marks before being able to slam. If you have to complete this in two to three damage phases, make sure that you do not slam in the same platform more than once. Each wizard is set up on their own respawn timer, so if you take too long clearing out the other wizards, you run the risk of having them spawn back in as you're trying to destroy them. So be sure that you are being time conscious here throughout the encounter. If your Partitioner timer runs out, you will die. If you don't slam the Partitioner's marks before the next sets of wizards spawn in, you're most likely going to die because you're not going to be able to slam until those wizards are dead. Once you have slammed your Partitioner's marks, you'll have a narrow window of time to apply damage to the boss. Once you have defeated the Ogre boss, you'll need to head up the steps and out of this area to where you will see a large statue of Sir Ido.
After listening to the statue, you will be rewarded with either the tokens or the broken talisman exotic quest. If you've completed the Wish Ender quest on this character in the past, you won't be able to pick it up again, so you would want to run it on another character. At this point though, you can leave the Shattered Throne. And now that we're all caught up and back on the same page, to complete the objectives for each of the three tokens, we'll need to head back into the Shattered Throne. So if you're doing this in the same week, be sure to reset your checkpoint first. Once you've returned to the Shattered Throne, your first token objective will be located here in the opening stage. To complete this token, you'll need to defeat two extra large taken Minotaur that you will need to summon in by grabbing the red relic as we do in the video, and then dunking it at the appropriate open-handed statue. You'll need to complete the objectives of the token first before unlocking all of the symbols for the doorway. If you wait until after the doorway has been opened, you won't get credit for cleansing the dreaming token, and most likely your minotaur will not spawn in. Reality is the finest flesh, O oh murderer mine, and I am not hungry. Once you have defeated the two Minotaur, you'll see flavor text in the bottom left that state you are worthier. At this point, if you do have any tokens, you should see that one of them has changed from a dreaming token to a cleansed token. At this point, the objective is complete. No matter what happens at this point going forward, you do not have to complete this token again.
The second token objective will be located in the descent and is a multi-stage objective. You'll first need to make your way to the narrow scaffolding where the ogres are located.
In this room, there is a relic that you'll need to transport to the other end of the room and slam into an opened armed statue along the wall side, just like we did for the first token. It's important that you do not die at any point here because if you do wipe, you'll have to start the process of this token over, which can be extremely deflating as the gauntlet to get to the ogre room is a pain in the ass on its own. With that being said, you'll want to make quick work of the ogres as they spawn in. I find it best to move forward along this room to force all of the ogres to spawn in first. Take them all out and then locate the relic. Once you've slammed this relic into the open-handed statue, you'll just need to continue through the ogre room until you get to the thrallway.
this is where we're going to find our second relic and you'll find it as soon as you enter into the portal go into the room to your right and pick up the relic you'll need to carry it all the way through the end of this maze which can be difficult when you have thrall chasing you try not to get stuck trying to punch your way through a near endless supply of thrall as it's probably not going to work out in your best interest it's best to just bunny hop through this maze and get out as quickly as possible once you've gotten to the drop off and and drop out of the slow-mo area you'll find another open-handed statue on the right wall go ahead and slam it and be careful because there's going to be more thrall that spawn in as you slam As a result of slamming these two relics, a new hidden doorway will open within the Shattered Throne, directly across from the room that you're currently in. But now is not a time to celebrate or take breath, because the slightest mishap and death could lead to you having to reset the entire dungeon checkpoint. Because the opening of this room is contingent upon slamming the tokens, you'll find that if you wipe even during the next mini boss fight, you will not be able to re-enter this area. So please do not die. If by chance you do die and you spawn back in to find that the door is closed, you will have to exit the Shattered Throne, reset your checkpoint, and start over. Once you've made your way into this room though, you'll have several thrall that spawn in at first. Clear through these guys, and after a few moments, a Taken Captain will appear in the middle of the room. Defeating this Captain will reward you with another cleansed token. Once cleansed, you won't have to worry about completing this objective again, as it will be locked in.
you'll now need to head towards the first ogre boss where you'll find the third and final token objective. The encounter will play out just as it did when you first ran through. Only this time, when you first slam the partitioner relic, you will need to head to the back of the room to find a taken minotaur who just spawned in. Killing this minotaur will spawn in a new token that you will need to pick up and dunk into an open-handed statue alongside the adjacent wall. Dunking the relic will spawn in a new Taken Ogre mini-boss. Defeating this mini-boss will cleanse your final Dreaming token. By the time that this mini-boss spawns in, your opportunity to damage the main boss will expire, which will see a whole new set of adds and wizards spawn in. Try not to get too overwhelmed at this point. Find some nearby cover and focus your fire on the mini ogre. Once you've defeated the mini ogre, you can resume the boss fight as normal. Just be sure that you don't slam into the same pillar that you slammed in before. If you end up wiping at this point, you won't have to worry about completing the token objective again, as it will have already transformed into a cleansed token. Now your only objective will be to complete this encounter so that you can visit the statue of Sir Ido once more, where you will then receive the Wish Ender exotic boat.
be sure to remain here at the statue until it has completed all of its dialogue. Otherwise, you might not get rewarded with the Wish Ender. If you do not receive the Wish Ender at this point, double check your tokens and ensure that all three now say cleansed. Make sure that you have space on your character for the Wish Ender, otherwise it will be sent to your Postmaster. If you've completed the Wish Ender quest on each of your three characters already, you won't be able to acquire another Wish Ender or its quest but you can still aid others in completing the objectives. And with that, I think we've successfully covered literally anything and everything that could pose you issues when completing the Wish Ender Exotic Bow Quest. If you're having an issue still yet with the quest that we did not address in today's video, be sure to let me know in the comments below. I wish you all the best and luck in getting your Wish Enders. I hope you've enjoyed today's video and found it helpful. If so, then please be sure to hit that like button below along with the subscribe button if you're new. Both are greatly appreciated and really do help support the channel. If you're in need of help throughout this season, maybe with a dungeon, a raid, or any of the seasonal content, be sure to check out the Discord link in the description below and join one of the greatest communities in all of Destiny. And until next time, Guardians, this has been Profane, wishing you all some happy hunting.